Spiky bits. Okay, so we finished the uh, the brown here, and now what we're gonna do is cut in with some uh, just some quick purple, just to give it that diseased look. And like I said, this is a this is a great purple. You will not be able to find this in uh, airbrush in any other line because you know it's a fantasy color, and they just uh, we're too niche for them, I guess. So we're just gonna pop a little bit in here, not too much at all, because it's not gonna not gonna use too much. And as you can see, that's a that's a really nice purple. It's gonna blend well with that. Uh, gonna blend really well with that brown so we're just kind of kind of shooting into the guts here just trying to leave some of the purple on the outside just kind of go more uh, the brown on the outside and more purple on the inside because we're going to take that up with some pinks and some uh, some washes and stuff and make it really really crazy it's easy looking so there you go i know it's kind of hard to see with all the uh but you can kind of get the idea there. That's really all you got to do. You just got to hit it with some purple. You could do a light dry brush too if you really wanted. But I actually prefer the uh, the airbrush look. It gives it a nice little fade. Kind of show you what we're talking about. So yeah, pretty easy, super quick. It doesn't use that much paint. I'm going to finish off this, uh, this uh, batch of dudes I have right here. And then we're going to come back. I'm going to show you how we're going to cut back these lines here, and then we're going to get to some washing. Okay, so now we're going to go back in with the, uh, the original uh, highlight color and just kind of create a natural uh, fade between the uh, the greens and that brown there because the brown kind of kind of gets everywhere when you spray it as much as, uh, as, much as you don't want it to. So we're going to go in with that and uh, just kind of cut it back a little bit. So for that one, we're going to use the, uh, uh, what is it here, the Pestilence Flesh. The first base coat, and it might need a little bit of it. So there we go. And we're just gonna stay at the uh, 20 psi, just to try to keep the uh, the fades nice. A little watery. This one's always uh, kind of acts up sometimes. You don't have exactly the right. Alright, so like I said, we're just gonna kinda go in, kinda cut the uh cut the brown back a little bit. So we're gonna start back here and just kind of follow up to the sides of where where I shot the brown. Very gently. Now it's not gonna cover up the brown all the way, you're still gonna see some brown. But the trick is that, that the uh, the washes and the uh, different little tricks we're going to use to pull this model back together are going to fix all that. So we're going to get in between the, uh, and the ribs here, kind of keep it from being too dark. There you can kind of see where it covers up the brown, but it's not quite all the way dark. Now the face is always tricky, so we're going to save that for last, but I'm getting in here around the hips because you don't want, I mean you want some sort of uh, some sort of color separation there, but you don't want it too crazy. And on the arm here, I kind of overshot up here on the shoulder. Now we're going to try to cut it back right here around the, around the face a little bit. Really, you just want that brown detail there in the mouth, just for the uh, the bone that we're gonna go in and do. Covered up the eye there, and at least for the most part, we got it. It doesn't have to be super perfect. These uh, tighten up this knee area down here, back behind the knee. And the rest of this looks pretty good. I get some on the side here. But yeah, that looks pretty overall like a pretty good blend. Maybe we'll tighten this face up front a little bit. 
There we go. So we just kind of leave that gaping maw mouth. Huh. Another angle here on this. So there's that. So it kind of gives you a kind of gives you an idea of where we're starting from with the uh, with the shades and stuff. So we're gonna come back and do some base coating and a couple of washes, and uh, this figure is really gonna come to life. So that's pretty much it for the airbrush. Um, like I said, this this project pretty much wouldn't be uh, wouldn't have been able to be done without these uh, miniature airbrush paints because the the range of these, and actually I have the set right here, so let's take a look at that real quick. Because you wouldn't believe, I got this nice little case, I bought a set of Vallejos here a while ago, and uh, oh wow, it's not going to really show it. But pretty much here's the uh, majority of the line, and what's really nice about this is, like I said, there's just crazy amounts of colors. Um, you can't really see because uh, it's bigger than the uh, that camera angle here. But here's the uh, here's the bone colors I've been using uh, for my Altway Titan, and uh, just to give you an idea, it's pretty crazy because you really can't find nothing like this in Vallejos. And yeah, you can uh, you can use uh, isopropyl alcohol and cut your own stuff, but you know it's just such a pain in the butt. And what's really nice about these is there's 80 different paints in this line. And uh, they are just super amazing when it comes to colors. They emulated a lot of colors. Like this is uh, this is kind of very similar to a Reaper paint um, that a lot of people like to use. And then we got a lot of the, the inks. They call them ghost tints, which is basically you just spray white over black. Well, that's actually a, uh, one of their metals, kind of like a brassy brass or like a hammerhead copper. Here's a ghost tint. Here's a yellow ghost tint, uh, which is really nice. You can. Uh, you can use this as a wash. You just kind of basically hit your model with uh, with some white over black or something, and then it's just instant shade. Another cool thing is some uh, satin coat, which is uh, a lot easier to use in the summertime instead of trying, you know, accidentally ruin your model with a uh, satin varnish aerosol. Then you got some gloss coat. So, like I said, this set's uh, there's 80 paints. You can't really see them all in the picture here because I got the camera the camera mount set, but uh, some pretty amazing stuff in here, and it's uh. You know, it's it's very hard to find these paints without having to mix them. So here they are, ready to use. Uh, it's, I picked up the whole set. It's pretty much worth it if you're uh, if you're an airbrush painter. So I'm gonna go and uh, finish the rest of these guys, and then we'll uh, do some base coating, and I'll kind of show you how to pull this model together real quick. Okay, so I went ahead and uh, did all the base coating on this uh, on this model here, and as you can see, he's got a uh, he's got a lot of details now. Um, I picked out a lot of the uh, the poxes and the sores with uh, with some what is this? Uh, this the new Flash gets yellow from uh, the new Citadel line that came out, and then I used uh, this uh, Gene Stealer purple layer to do all over all the purple and stuff where I sprayed, and then I came in with some pink here, Empress Children pink, and just kind of highlighted over the purple there, um, just to give it a nice uh, dirty kind of gross kind of sickly uh, skin look and then the back there I did the same thing as well did the purple first and then the pink over it. and used uh, like I said I used the yellow and some of this uh, library green from game color um, just to kind of go over and get some of the pustules and stuff use some chain mail on the sword there it was super easy and then went in with some bone and uh, skull white on the teeth and on the eye just kind of used some I forget what this is it's like a, the new regal it's a tequila's blue and then highlighted it with uh, Lothran blue, and then dotted it with a, with a little white there. So it looks a little bright right now, which is exactly where we want it because we're going to give it a nice, uh, thorough wash. Uh, I have uh, have some of this old uh, Agra flesh there. That's um, some great some great stuff. I know there's some new uh, some new flesh out uh, flesh wash out now, but I've got so much of the older stuff that I'm just going to keep using it, and I and I like it, and I use it, and I know how and I know how it works, so it works for me. Uh, normally you want to satin varnish these guys. Just want to spray it down, give it a, just to get it in a nice uh, um, something basically for the wash to flow over. Uh, I don't have time to let it uh, to let it satin varnish and uh, it sit and dry and stuff. So what I'm going to do is just going to go ahead and uh, going to go ahead and hit it up with a wash. Just starting at the top, kind of coming down. 
Uh, if this was something more uh, more intricate and more detailed, you know, looking, I probably would hit it and do the do the full tutorial on it. But just because it's Nurgle, um, <laughs> it's kind of really not going to matter anyways if you think about it. So what you want to do is get you a nice flat dry brush. In this case, I'm using the Army uh, the Army Painter War Games large dry brush, which is great. Picks up a lot of that wash. Um, and then I just kind of hose it, hose it on down, just give it a nice good coat all over, down to the feet, down the arms, down the back, around the ankles. Now, I have to admit, I cut this with a little, uh, a little bit of, um, GWR coat, um, probably about 50-50 mix of art coat and water, and then I dumped in some, uh, dumped it in the, the wash here. So what you want to do, what you want to be careful of at this point is I've kind of coated the whole model, but then you want to go in and just just kind of dab up like where it's a little extra with a nice uh, moist brush. Normally the stuff flows a little bit better, but like I said, I didn't have a chance to do a satin varnish over top of it, and you just kind of dab up those problem areas behind the ankles, behind the knees, get the mouth, just anywhere you think uh, it's going to pull, because it probably will. The stuff's not. You know, they say to just glob it on and go, but because I thinned it down a little bit, sometimes that's a problem. Uh, so, I just want to get in there, dab it off. Nice and easy. So, what I'm going to do for this, just to, oh, you want to make sure you get a bunch on this sword, too, because this, uh, this plague sword is going to be really gnarly looking and all diseased and caked on. I'll probably hit it with a little bit of devil mud, too, at the end, just to get it nice and, uh, Nice and disease looking. So there's your uh, there's your plague bearer with a nice good wash of auger and flush over it. Nice good coat. So what I'm going to do now is, and this kind of gives you a good look at the uh, the paints I use there. And there's the uh, the guys I was airbrushing earlier too. I'm just going to kind of put them down here with his buddies. I turn on this nice little miniature fan I got, and uh, what that does is that'll really help dry it while I clean off my brushes and. Uh, Get the wash out for the next um, for the next wash. We're gonna do uh, we're gonna do the Thraka green wash next on top of it, and then just tighten up any problem areas. And that's uh, that's pretty much it. And you're really uh, you're really surprised when you see it because it's uh, very simple to do. Just take, it takes more time to base coat the details with those paints than it does to uh, to actually paint the whole model, which is kind of funny. So we'll be right back with that. Okay, so this guy's done drying with the uh, the wash of auger and flush I did. What you see here is, uh, you know, nice, nice shading and stuff. You can kind of see where the wash got in the, the cracks here, and around the uh, the guts and everything. Got some staining on the sword. Just kind of brought everything together. Um, nice little wash slash filter, in uh, in and around everywhere there. So what we're gonna do next is um, is hit it up with some uh, some auger and green, or excuse me, thraka green. Uh, just kind of pop it out to uh, make it more nergly looking. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the way it looks right now. It probably needs some, like another, another shade just to kind of pull, the, you know, pull the browns because it's very, very browny right now. So I'm just gonna hit it with some, uh, some thaka green again, starting at the top, just working our way down, nice and easy with a big, uh, big flat dry brush. These things are great for soaking up the, uh, the wash and just kind of getting it everywhere. Really good. And plus, they cover a lot of surface area, which is which is really nice too. I'm just kind of kind of dab out of that area there because I don't really want want it down in the the guts and the belly and stuff. We got something else special planned for those. Make them nice and uh, nice and juicy looking. So it's kind of hitting everywhere, especially the sword. Want a nice even coat on the sword just because it's gonna. You don't want it to be, you know, because it's metal, you don't want it to be the first thing people see, but you also want it to be nice and kind of gross looking, so want some different variances of color in there and stuff. Like I said, I'll probably hit it with a little devil mud at the end just to... Okay, so you want to just make sure you get in here and just get a nice even coat with the Thaka Green. You go back, get anything, moisten your brush a bit, get under here, get all these... uh areas of stuff pools and just make sure you get a nice even coat on there and as you can see it's kind of starting to come through like the green starting to come through a bit 
You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna get a. Uh, I'm gonna set this down to dry, but I'm gonna hit it with a little devil mud on the sword just to get that caked on look. And then we're gonna come back and give the guts a little bit of, a little bit of detail here. So here's pretty much the almost finished product. We've got the uh, two washes on it, and I went and put some devil mud on the uh, on the sword there, so you can kind of see it's looking a little diseased and and uh, corroded and stuff. Uh, last thing we're going to do is we're going to use some of this new uh, GW glaze, this blood letter, right out of the pot. Because um, it's made to kind of shade things. It's not really a wash per se. Like you don't want to just kind of like smash it all over the model like we were doing there a minute ago. It's more for like directed approaches. So I'm just going to take a fine detail brush here. Yeah, there's some I find. And just kind of hit right over top, like a, almost like I'm painted on, on the guts just like right over there and what you might be able to see at least it looks like through the camera is that it's really starting to uh, to look look juicy it kind of shaded it up really red and raw like a medium steak or like a rare steak rather so that's what we're gonna do we're just gonna hit these areas I'm gonna make them nice and delicious looking with this blood letter glaze and uh, you know, I tried using Karienberg Crimson at first, and it's it's kind of purpley, and it really like it doesn't work as well. Like you could do it, and then you could just kind of go back with some pink. But I think I think for my money, I am super happy with this blood letter, this blood letter glaze, because man, it really makes it look like gross. And you can even do like crazy stuff, like oh, let me get this intestine right down here. You can even do like little dribbles, like. Blah, 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 blah spilled over like just kind of make it shaded a little bit it looks really good I think there's only four glazes there's like a uh, was it a red a yellow a red a yellow a blue hmm I don't know what the other one is apparently I haven't used it yet but I've used the red and the yellow and the blue I used the blue on my screamers for this army uh, I used the red just now and also on uh, on my blood crushers and I used the yellow. What I did with the yellow was now let's take a look here. So here's here's my finished uh, demo model for this video, which I think looks pretty good. We'll hit it with some uh, some matte coat spray. It'll kind of pull it down. You know, it'll make it look more like uh, more like this guy here, which I have a, a complete uh, photographic uh, journal on that we'll be putting up here soon. So there's that guy. And like I said, he I did him the same way with the Ogren flesh and the uh, Thraka green but what you can also do you can switch it up and instead of doing Thraka, Thraka green afterwards I did uh, I did the yellow gray glaze I think it's Lamenter's yellow and I did the yellow glaze instead of the Thraka green at the end and what it does is it gets some nice some nice subtle variations in there you can tell it's not brown but it's also you know good looking basically so I mixed these, I mixed, I did a squad of 10, about four of them, I did with the yellow, and the rest I did with the Thraka green, and I think, you know, once you have them on the tabletop, you know, it's, uh, gives it a nice little variance there, it kind of looks a little different, there's the, uh, there's the new guy, he's probably going to be a little shiny, with that, uh, art coat in there, it makes it a little shiny till you, till you go back and hit it with a, hit it with a matte coat, I use the, uh, GW Purity Seal because it's got, uh, it's satiny, and it's, uh, it works pretty good. It works great for washes. Uh, it's but way better than the matte coat. So just kind of give you an idea there too. You can kind of see the yellow come through instead of the green. So and if you screw up, you're like, hey, you know, I just uh, I just airbrushed all this stuff. I don't have a I don't have a color to uh, if I screw up and I get some brown over it or something like that. You can always use the uh, the Army Painter uh, Necrotic Flesh, which matches the uh, the primer job. Now it doesn't look like it because I sprayed lightly over. Uh, over a gray here, um, just a gray plastic. I just sprayed right over that, so it's going to look a little light. But once you get once you get going and get all your stuff on there, this is uh, this will work just great, and it's straight out of the bottle. Uh, it's a little watered down, kind of like the new GW layer paints. It's got it's got a little bit of water in it, but it's super good to use. So that's pretty much it. That's uh, that's my very first airbrushing tutorial on uh, plague bears. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you uh, found it easy to do. I'm not trying to do anything too overly complicated. Just trying to make it nice and easy. So, um, 
really hope you enjoyed it and uh, you know leave a leave a comment and subscribe if you want I'm gonna try to do more you know if this uh, if this catches on I'll definitely try to do a few more I'm always working on something I did did a bunch of great nights and stuff so I love I love to go back and revisit a lot of projects and show you guys how to do them so I'm MBG Rob Bear thanks for watching my uh, airbrushing tutorial on Nurgle Plate Bears. Spiky Bits.